Hello everyone, I'm My Time, and I'm here to bring you a guide stroke tutorial onto leveling up cards in WWE Supercard Series 2, or Season 2 as I should probably say. And many of you have probably played Season 1, I joined at the very end, uh, I've only ever had one Road to Glory before this current one now, and I'm trying to play my way through the game, okay? So if you are feeling like this guy here, I'm hoping this works then I'm going to try and help you out okay now before we kick off I did find this on the internet uh, I believe you might have seen that before it's very similar to the opening scene on supercard and load up to our two fists which look like this before you actually see all the superstars and stuff and join the game through the play button but anyway getting back to the topic I'm here to help people who may be play the game for fun, don't want to spend money. Now I have uh, bought a few credits, they were for the last ring domination to make sure that I got the card because I got to the ultra rare and I wanted to complete it. Uh, but I've not purchased any cards, okay? I haven't bought any packs. Everything I've got is from either the fusion or from playing the game. And I'm gonna show you how you can improve your team and work through to get the better cards without having to spend the money. Now don't get me wrong, it is a longer process, but to do that, you need to make the most of your weaker cards. And by making the most of your weaker cards, what I'm gonna do is show you how to train your cards, okay? And I've done some of this already, so uh, to cut out some of the time. But once you have made the card, I'm then gonna show you how to actually train it, or the best ways to train it. Now there are other videos, and some of them are really good, but um, I I have watched, for example, Super Oh My God Barbecues videos, and a few of them, and he does a similar video as well. But I'm hoping this one will show some of you who maybe are still quite new to the game, or who haven't played that much. As you can see, I, I don't have a, an abundance of great cards. But I'm gonna show you how to make the most of the ones you have. Now, the main change from season one to season two is the interaction with the cards. Now, the cards look similar to season one. I mean, I think the graphics are quite nice and they look a bit crisper. I like I like the, the art in the back. I, I think they look a bit more like, as you can see, they've got the whole, sh like, kind of, the blue burst through it here you know if you go to the super rares and look at these cards you know they're all very like wow in your face you know a bit like the thunder and the ice and the fire at the start of the game um, and if you go to to a card same as before start off with standards they start off at zero out of 15 for example um, and as you play through them they will um, as you sorry as you feed them feed I'll come to that in a moment they will gain levels. Now, first point I'm gonna go over is how to properly feed cards. Um, it will sound stupid, okay? The idea is easy. You go to improve, and you click on train. You then pick a card that you don't need. For example, this rock card. Uh, you can pick multiple cards. I'll pick egg card, edge card, I'll pick Bray Wyatt, and I click proceed and they go into here, and he's now level two out of 20, stats have all increased. Done, that's how you train a card. You keep doing that all the way up until you reach 20 out of 20, and he's been trained to the maximum. You can in increase, should we say, in in and by increase, I don't, I don't mean um, increase his total level, I think you can just increase, should we say, the productivity of your um, improving by doing something called uh, I'm gonna name pro feeding so I'm gonna show you what that is okay you get two cards you don't need common and uncommon cards for most of you now should be nothing but fodder so they should be cards that you're going to use to improve your cards that you use um, it would do the same with some rare cards depending on your level and I am doing it with rare cards but for the time being I'll show you with a couple of uncommon cards so you combine them together okay you make them into a pro card. Now the silver star is fine, it doesn't matter. So I have an Eric Rowan Pro. Um, 
and for the purpose of this video uh, as you can see you can do it with you'd go through and you would pick all the cards that you have that you can make into pro cards you combine them and make them into a pro okay now if you were then to do exactly the same with your common cards and I would do it with Booker T here you do this with all your cards before feeding now you can say why are you bother to do that why are you prone them and then getting rid of them well two reasons one if you pro them they will then go into your card catalog so that whole catalog there you could get but you, if you get Booker T, you need to get two Booker T's and pro him for it to have him both his normal and his pro version in the card catalog. So that is one reason why you would do it. But the main reason is because he's going to give you more XP. And the reason he's going to give you more XP is because he's a pro card. And that means his level has gone up. So we take a non pro card, Triple H, he's 0 out of 10. Booker T is 0 out of 15. Okay. Um, if you look at the stats here, 88, 85, 87, 83, Booker T has got a 91, 80, he's also a stronger card, so he's going to provide more experience. Now, I'm going to show you um, what I mean on a rare card. Okay, so for the purpose of this video, I'm going to pick two rare cards that I'm not using. Um, okay, I will use both the Stone Cold and this Undertaker. Now, I take Stone Cold, and I do exactly what I did before that John Cena. I click on Improve. I click on Entrain, and I go to filter my cards, and I go to Common. And I can see here, I have an Eric Rowan. Okay? So, I'm going to... It took me two Eric Rowans to make one Eric Rowan Pro. So, I'm going to click Eric Rowan Pro. It took me two Summer Rays to make the Summer Ray Pro. So, I'm going to click Summer Ray Pro. Okay? Now, I'm going to proceed and put both of these two into stone cold and if you notice he's on level two and he's on the line so he's level two between on the um, line between that and uh, 15 so that's two pro common cards unfortunately I don't have enough of the same card to show you the exact mechanics of it uh, because the stats are fractionally different for the cards but this is for the idea I will now go back and I'll go to my undertaker card and I'm going to do exactly the same. I'm going to level him up. However, I'm going to level him up with four common cards, which aren't pro. Okay, so I have to leave Curtis Axel because he's got the pro sign. I will take the four strongest cards I have. Now, if you do it by common filter, they will be in terms of well, strength is is misleading because um, I don't mean it in strength and toughness of power. I mean that their total attribute points. Um, I don't know, so for example, Roman, Roman Reigns is either the same total, say it be uh, 740 and 200, say it be, I don't know, what did I say, 740 and 228, uh, 286, then Cesaro is maybe 285, Ziegler might be 283, Rusev might be 283, okay, so they'll go down like that. Now I'm going to pick Roman, Cesaro, Dolph, and Rusev, okay, so now I'm picking the four strongest solo common cards I have for this. I click proceed into my Undertaker. Now notice he is only 2 out of 15 as well but he hasn't quite made it to that bar. He's still uh, a reasonable amount short and that's using the 4 you know, strongest in terms of total attribute uh, common heroes where, and I can show you here, I merged the how far that Summer Ray um, and Curtis Axel was down here so Curtis Axel obviously now has been moved up to the, the top because of he's a pro version um, but I have just made more more experience out of pro in the card the two cards and feeding them than I have doing them individually okay and I'll show you that again in just a moment with the uncommons okay we're back here now I was going to show you the uncommons, but believe me, it's exactly the same. Okay, uh, this pro Cesaro will um, give more experience than this big show and say Dolph Ziggler. Um, you can you can check that out for yourself. Um, the way to do this really is to go in here, um, go 
scroll through. Oh, waiting on network. Uh, oh no. I just trolled myself. That's the end of my cards. Um, yeah, you go through and you find, I don't know, your, your, your cards you're not using and just pro them, okay, and then start feeding them. Now, once you get um, a card made up to the maximum and you have a sidekick to do the same, now I can't show you this quite because um, my Randy Orton's aren't quite there, but as you can see, they are both 15 out of 15 so they look good to go but you know this they've got two different stats uh, this one's doing 22 to his power slam this one's doing 18 but he's got more speed this one's got less speed why because this is a big change what they've done to season two from season one they've allowed you to customize your cards okay so once you go to improve it's not just about making them maximum level anymore you click on improve you get fire tokens okay at level 5, 10 and 15. Now for this one I've put two fire tokens in power and one in speed. By doing so you can see I have a power bonus of plus 6 and a speed bonus of plus 3. Now my other Rand, uh, Randy Orton card, I did it different. I did one in power and two in speed. Okay. Now you might say, but hold up, okay so that explains the difference between the power and the speed, but what about power slam why is one doing 22 and one doing 18 now, if I could get that confused face back up I would do but it would take me ages and you, should, you don't watch me mess around with that so the reason for that is and I can click on improve again down at the bottom you have the ability category and now this one his ability has propped and by proc I mean he's used that power slam that special move got an 18 boost to his speed in 12 matches that he's played in Whereas on my other card, he has done it in the full 20 matches, hence he has a plus 8 bonus. So before you merge your cards together, you need to make sure that to get the maximum out of them, you've added the free tokens to wherever you want, depending on how you want your card to turn out. You can decide. There's no real right or wrong. It's all personal preference. With cards in these tiers, for example, rares and ultra rares and super rares, the kind of cards which later down the line once you play a bit more you probably won't use as much um, or they'll become obsolete you just feed them if you make a mistake it's fine there's, there's, there's such an abundance of rare cards you can make another one you know and, and change it etc once you get to the hard of the come by cards the epics and legendaries you might want to just have another think before you do it um, but I've stuck him in his two best attributes to begin with to uh, keep him as a strong card in those in those uh should we say categories so you want to make sure all your bars are full now you can say how do I fill my bars you fill your bars by using your card you can use your card in exhibition games and that's how most people will train their cards up by just using it so if a match comes with power and toughness he will get one for power and toughness if he happens to use his ability in that same game he will also get one in ability now it doesn't have to match the um, attributes so it doesn't have to be a speed match for the ability to proc and the speed bonus for them to get the point it can proc in a match of charisma and have no effect on the outcome of the match. As long as it procs, then he gets the point. So you wait till they're all up to the maximum before you train him with your other card. You make sure you put your tokens in and then you get a card like this John Cena one. Okay. Now if you look at this John Cena and you look at his stats, he's on level 2 because I put um, a card into him just to see the boost of it. Uh, he's perfect pro I've got the gold star but I've perfect proed him properly okay I haven't just gotten to match level and proed him together I made sure he was level 15 I made sure I used all three fire tokens on both versions of him and I made sure he had 20 games in all of the required matches uh, in all the required attributes sorry and also down in his ability that's worth noting that for the should we say the, the better cards the higher tier cards epics and stuff I think you have to do 30 matches so double check okay before you do the combining for cards you actually want to keep and use double check now for cards here like this um, this Seth uh, Rollins which I regret now I do regret this um, I done it early to feed him when I was going well and I, I should have pr proed him properly but 
I say you live and learn, I'm still new. Um, this Undertaker, same thing again. Um, I've made them into pros to feed. Uh, I was doing the same with my Cody Rhodes, and I've got more down here, more cards which I've made into pros. Because as I showed you before, with um, with the commons and uncommons, rather than feeding two rare cards, if I pro it, I'm going to get more XP. Okay, so these ones that when I've got spare cards and that, and I haven't got anything I'm trying to trying to improve, I start to improve these cards. Okay, so these I'm on there now. Finish off Cody Rhodes, and then I will use those to feed my stronger cards. This is what I'll get to in a moment with my John Cena. Okay, so before we get there, just show you King of the Ring. I had my two Randy Orton's playing in King of the Ring um, to level them up, okay? Because I wanted his abilities to trigger. Now, by playing the King of the Ring, that was 45 games where each time your card used, you'll get a point in whatever attribute was for that match, whatever two attributes there were. If his ability triggers or her ability triggers, same thing, you get a point in that. So you can literally leave your cards in King of the Ring to level themselves up. Now, one tactic is to put 10 cards in here that you don't care about you know that you don't care about the outcome should I say of the King of the Ring you just want all your cards to train up you put them in you take the 45 games and most of them come out almost completely done you've only got to go into exhibition and play a few games with them to finish them off um, otherwise true like I've done here you can put a mixture of your good cards and a couple of the weaker ones um, trying to get through the King of the Ring into the quarterfinals and then just see what happens with this deck. I got to the quarters, I forgot about it, and I was already one nil down by the time I got there. Uh, they were all all exhaust, exasperated, I think that's the word. Um, I know it exhausted is, but I'm trying to be posh. And I had to use my energies, and I lost the second game when the last, last match just didn't work out for me. But um, you can obviously get there and try and get to the quarter finals ideally the semis and try and get that rare card um, either way it doesn't matter but you can just you let the game improve your deck for you same thing bouts in road to glory uh, they they're included so if you're going to be playing these people the lower down ones maybe even Ric Flair I'm not too sure when you get to him but your opponents aren't too hard so you can use your weaker cards fight with them and they will improve they will get the, the depending on the required attribute, they'll get the points for it, and they will also get the ability triggers. Um, it was the same in ring domination. Okay, so the idea here, what I'm saying is, you can actually use your cards within the game to improve them. It doesn't have to be for exhibition. Um, if you do want to do it for exhibition, there are generally three ways, and I will show you all three ways in just a moment. Yes, mom. I have brushed my teeth. How many times left? Welcome, guys. My time here. And as I said, I'm now going to show you in exhibition how to train your cards. Okay. Now, I mentioned before there's three ways. So the first way I'm going to mention is the way where you don't give a damn. Okay. It's, it's as simple as that. You say, I don't care the outcome. I'm going to put six cards in, or as many cards as you can. If you don't have the divas, then you don't have the divas. Um, you put in all the cards that you want to train and you just fight and you just fight, fight, throw them in, fight, throw them in, fight and you win, you win, you lose, you lose you don't worry but it's going to be the quickest way to level up as many cards as you can in exhibition Now, not many people are going to do that because they're going to be worried about the win-loss ratio but still that is an extremely effective way now I have mentioned you can do it in King of the Ring uh, by leaving your cards to fight those 45, 50 odd games, you can do it by using them in ring domination, but road to glory now. Um, all those different ways, but exhibition is the way how you're going to fine tune them, okay? So it's going to become a stage where there's no point putting a card into ring, dom uh, not ring domination, sorry, into king of the ring, when they're almost, say, played the required games for all the attributes uh, to have them locked in something for a couple of days so you have to come into exhibition now here's a couple of things about exhibition that people either didn't know or they didn't really think about your team is look at them not as superstars look at them as numbers okay your rank so for example mine here super 
rare plus is determined by the total number of the attributes of all your superstars okay so it's not determined by card rarity so for example here I have a super rare Cameron who is 15 out of 15 and she's maxed out everything and I've got her compared to my John Cena who is level 2 out of 20 but he's a pro so he's close to her already by the time he's pro out he's going to massively exceed her okay so and this is a super rare car versus just a rare card this is why you pro your cards this is why it's important to make sure that you do them properly to get the most out of them I could run or you could run as well uh, a whole, t whole team of pro rare cards okay all matched up properly and you'll be in super rare plus plus because depending who you've used and where you've attributed your tokens to what stats etc you will have some people that will be similar to this Roman Reigns card in terms of maybe not the 323 power but they will be on the 308, 304s for their top attribute um, and you know that's going to put them way above any of the maxed out super rare cards and as a result you could probably also be very close you might even get into ultra rare I can't confirm that maybe some of the uh, you know should we say more professional pl um, car players out there like super so my god barbecue um, uh, someone like that might be able to give you a better indication to where you would be with those kind of cards um, I can promise you that you will be way above that current tier so you will not be in rare using a John Cena card list you will be in the top tier of super rare possibly uh, into the first tier of ultra rare so going back into playing with the card uh, method one I've explained putting all the cards you don't care about you just play them play them and you're doing it to train them you don't worry about the win loss ratio that's the best way that's the best way in terms of the quickest okay if you do care about your win loss ratio there's two ways to do it way number one I will show you now what I've done is I've got two cards here okay there's Randy Orton who I'm using to try and get his procs to get his ability to proc and my John Cena who as you can see I've only just got and I'm just using him in general so I've used my total points to put me near the top of super rare but not into super rare plus now if I were to say swap Randy Orton out for um, someone like the Miz if he swaps I will go into super rare plus plus but I will come to this in a moment for now I am going to swap him and use my two cards that I want to improve and just double check yeah this is the guy isn't it yeah yeah and keep myself at the top at the crest of the wave you know I'm hanging on the edge waiting to wipe out into that super plus plus water um, I do that because it means that when I go back and I have my list of players they're all in my tier here I'm at the very top of the tier so I mean overall my points are likely to be higher than all these people or at the very worst level and that means I should win the majority of the games okay if you want to refresh you can go back and come back into exhibition and get a new set of people you can go back and come back in again now I could get people from the tier above so super rare plus plus or if I was at the bottom of this I could get people from the tier below uh, it being super rare but as I'm coming to pick a person here I know I'm near the top and to increase my chances even further I'm going to pick a person who looks like they play on their account and by that I mean I'm not going to go for undeniable because he's played so little games a very good chance for him to be in the super rare area he's bought a lot of cards and he's training them up okay instead I'd pick someone like this like super down here because it looks like he is playing on his account okay so I click him and my aim here is to use my cards and still win the game if you don't care about winning the game you can just play and it doesn't matter but I'm going to try and show you how you can still win the majority of your games now forget the losses I've had I've had those losses from training like this but um, when I wasn't near the top of tiers I've had them from ring domination um, I've had them from when I was like first starting out in the game and I wasn't that good uh, I made mistakes and stuff so diva it's got nothing to do with me all I want to do is try and win it okay I throw out my diva now what I could have done and what I probably should have done to show you is I should have made sure I won the diva match um, because 
it's going to um, ruin me showing you how to win all your games but let's go on from here anyway okay so now if I were to run my two my two tag teams my Roman Reigns and my Stone Cold I'm going to win and I'm then left with a decider in the last game I could try to mix and match and which one I'm going to do here I'm use my boost and I'm going to mix and match and hope that I'm still strong enough to win okay now I wouldn't have normally done this uh, I'm doing this just to show you uh, I win the game because my Stone Cold was strong and my thing wasn't now I just have to win the last game um, if I didn't care about winning and it was a male game I would have thrown in my Randy Orton if it was singles and I wanted to win I'd have thrown in my Ronan Reigns and I'm going to pretty much win this because Cameron is going to beat whatever diva they got left. I know this is going to happen because I'm at the top of this tier and the guys already used a few of his good cards okay so I didn't get to use both of my cards unfortunately but I got to use one of them um, and I got to use him by even losing the first game okay ideally what you will try and do is potentially win the first game and I'll show you now we will use Andrew you can try and win the first two games and then hope you get a third game where you can just throw your card in it doesn't matter if you win or lose because you've only got to win 2-1 you don't have to win 3-0 there's no extra bonus if you care that much about winning you just win 2-1 um, word of caution here you can say I've got a solo match if it is solo matches you can be playing then it's an extremely not extremely increased chance that the best card will come out first and the card will get weaker as it go down um, yes yeah, so unless that card is used in a tag team um, I'm going to throw this match away by throwing in my Randy Orton and I'm going to then try and win the next two matches okay so that is my tactic so I'm going to use Orton here hope he procked he didn't proc I needed his power stand toughness that's good for me I'm going to now use my strong card okay my stone cold this is going to make it one all now because of my level if it's a diva I should hopefully win because I've got two strong divas and solar power now I can either take the guaranteed win and use the Roman remains or I could take a risk and use my John Cena now I should use my John Cena here because I don't care but to show you you can still win I will use my Roman Reigns and my toughness and I will beat his rock okay um, and his rock is a perfect pro as you can see he's in the 280s 290s so and that was a rare card uh, so there you go I threw the first game and I still won because of the tier now draw me again in a moment and I will show you option number two Okay everyone, option number two, I'm going to change my team slightly and I'm going to bring the Miz back. Good news, shouldn't be too much longer to go listen to me rabbit on, but I have Randy Orton and to be fair I can I can use um, or John Cena, it doesn't it doesn't matter. Um, for the purpose of the video I was going to use um, I'll, I'll swap out Randy but yeah so I'm gonna leave myself now one okay one card I'm looking to train in this case it'll be John Cena so I've now moved up into the super plus plus category okay but when I go backwards I have super plus plus and some of the super rare plus players so if I go back and go in again again I've got a mixture but if you haven't realized this or never really paid attention to it people in the tier below can't have as many points as you it's physically impossible if he had enough points to be in the super rare plus plus he'd be in this if you look at my bar I bar is that much into super rare um, he's only in sorry super rare plus plus he's only in super rare plus so best case scenario for him he has Three strong heroes and three very weak heroes putting him into that, that category. Um, if you find yourself with too many, too many of the uh, current, say the Super A plus plus in my example, people in your lineup, and you don't have enough in the, in the tier below, then you just 
either weaken the card you brought in, like the Miz, or I, for example, if I had a weaker card than John Cena, say Randy Orton, I would drop down slightly, which would give me an increased chance of getting a few people from the tier below. But in this example, and I'll pick this John Vengar here, um, the game's mechanics are already telling me that mathematically my team is stronger overall than his team. Now, he might have, for example, an epic hero, or an, a hero, <laughs> an epic superstar, yes, heroes. He might have Spider Man, or an incredible Hulk in his team. No, he might have somebody in there who is epic, and I will lose that battle, most likely. Uh, well, I do lose it. So, I will probably get beat in a match, but the rest of the people. I should win quite easily. So if I click on him and I come in, I'm playing a game that I should win 95% of the time unless I mess it up or I get royally screwed by the game itself. Now, use all the tactics I told you before the fact that um, the strongest card, if there's going to be single matches, will generally come out first unless it's in the tag team. Um, they're only ever going to have probably two really strong cards because most of the decks won't be at the top level, they'll be in the middle of the top. Uh, because you're going from a tier below, playing that super rare plus, he's not going to be at the bottom of the tier. Okay, he is going to be middle to top end, but you still saw the, the disparity between being the top of that other tier and your tier. So here we go. I've got a tag team toughness and speed. Now I'm going to go and try and win this. Okay, I'm going to assume that he is going to use some half decent people. So I'll use my two strongest cards and. As we can see here, uh, lo and behold, his two strongest cards come out straight away. As well, I'm going to assume that his two strongest cards. Okay, now solo match. I'm confident that my Miz and my two Divas will be strong enough to win it. But if I wasn't, I would put in a Miz, and I would hope that the last match was a solo match that I could use John Cena and win two one. But you know, I'm going to use the toughness. And I'm going to try and win this match. Now, use the toughness. Okay, he's not quite going to win. That's a shame. One all. But as I mentioned before, I checked the stats. I've seen two very strong people for him come into my tag team game, and he's just used a medium, well, I'd say super rare card. Uh, yeah, super rare card. My Cameron should win this. And here we go, she does win it quite easily. So I'd already mathematically worked out that I should win that game, therefore I could throw in my John Cena. Um, if I had to put out a different card, I would have won that second game, I would have beat Bradshaw, but then I would have got a Diva in the third game, so I wouldn't have got any experience into my John Cena. And the whole point of me doing this is to train up my John Cena. So yes, I'm trying to protect my win ratio at the same time, but there is no. it's gonna take longer if I just keep, just keep waiting for the opportunity where I go 2 no up and then use him. Um, same rules apply as before. You don't want to be picking loads of people who have only played a few games. This guy down here, Arturo, perfect. I'll come in again. Uh, mathematically, he's in the tier below me. So overall, my team is going to be stronger. There's a very good chance that the first game of it's solo or a tag team. If it's a tag team, it's probably going to use one of his strongest cards. If it isn't a particularly strong card in the tag team, then the next solo will be his strongest card. And that's almost a fact, okay? So that would be a very good time to say throw in your weakest card that you're training, knowing you're gonna probably you, you, he's gonna lose anyway. So he might as well lose against a strong card, so you can win the third game. Now here you've got toughness and speed and diva. Okay, so I'm going to just run out my diva card and see what happens. Now he's got a reasonably strong diva, so doing that lets me know he's gonna have some weaker points in his main team. So. I'm going to assume that now is going to be a, a reasonably strong card, so I will put out a card to try and win it with. Um, unfortunately, he's procced and he's beating me on this occasion. Now, now that I've already lost, I might as well put out John Cena. Okay, um, as you can see with this, uh, was it Tino, uh, Bruno, sorry, San Martino. Um, he's going to go and beat me. Now, once I'd already lost, it didn't matter. I might as well use my John Cena. But I lost that game because, see, here you go, I'm back to Super Rose. I lost that game because of the way it played out, not because he had a stronger 
updating me. Um, I'll try another one here. Uh, I didn't lose because he had, he had a stronger deck in total. I lost because of the way the games come out. Um, and that will happen. You won't be able, it doesn't matter how good your deck is, even if somebody is, is stronger than you, you can beat them if it goes in your favour. Um, another example will be here, my first game as a toughness. Now, as I said to you before, about the sacrificing, I'm going to sacrifice my John Cena here, okay? Because I think they're going to put out a good card. And lo and behold, it's a, it's a Roman Reigns fully levelled. So I go one nil down. But that's a good card gone. Power and toughness. It's very unlikely he's going to have another card who's going to be stronger than my strongest card. So let's put my strongest card out. And I'm going to win this one. Unless you get unlucky with Prox. Um, that can happen. Third game. Solo Charisma. Hmm. Miz. He's not going to beat me. There's no, there is no chance that he has a card here which has got anywhere near 300. He probably doesn't even have a card that can hit a boost and a proc in Charisma to beat Miz. Uh, he does. He has a pro book of T and he's maxed out his Charisma. Okay, so I almost ate my words there. Um, yeah, we've seen that. I could have been unlucky there. You see, I could have been unlucky. He could have propped his book of T and I would have actually lost and I would have looked like a right idiot. But... Yeah, um, wouldn't be the first time. I'll take it quite well, to be fair. Uh, yeah, so well, there you go. And again, okay, I, you might say, well, you only won two out of three. I did, but I used my card in every single game, and I still proved that you can, you can still, don't worry about that, you can still win while trying to train your cards. So, to remember from this, if you don't take anything else away, remember to maximise your cards by improving them to make sure you've done all the required games and all the attributes first before combining them and to save time with the training pro the cards you don't need and then combine them because you get more XP um, do that continue playing and you'll find that before too long you will end up in the higher tiers being able to get the better picks and you won't have to go out and spend the money on the packs. Okay, it will take a bit longer, but if you enjoy playing the game like I do, that's your uh, that's my best bit of advice. So I've been my time. Thank you for watching. Please leave a comment if you've got anything you're unsure about. If you want me to show you something else, uh, one or two of these parts of these videos have been done before, and for whatever reason I had to stop and redo them, so I couldn't show you all the stuff as well as I liked because they'd already been, for example, the heroes had already been um, combined or they'd already been fed away. But anything, leave it in the bottom and I will do my best to answer it for you. Peace out.